Welcome back to the podcast, guys. Today we got a special guest in house, a sponsor we've mentioned on the show multiple times here. Round of applause. Back oh. Chet from Backwoods Bumpers. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. And then we got these two hooligans, Jason and Derek. But uh, yeah, we've spent the last couple of days riding with uh, Chet here. It's his first time out in Revelstoke, getting the full experience. How's it been? Let me fire this thing back up. <laughs> um, there's that's such like a it's an easy question, but there's so much like going on when you get here. I've never been to the place, you know. Me and Chase Man just came off of some seven day ride, um, fly out here, drive six hours. We're caught in a snowstorm. It was a huge accident. Then we finally get here. Um, this is a booming metropolis down here. When you actually get here, I can't see anything, so I don't know the mountains that are around us, and. Um, it wasn't until the next morning that I kind of like really realized that, yeah, we're here. Um, and it wasn't all of, you know, as soon as we got on the sleds, we were right into some of the deepest snow that I've ever experienced before. Um, you definitely hit it at the right time. But you really, you didn't see Revelstoke. You just... No, yeah. No. You, you got the Revy snow, but not the Revy views. Right. It's hard to see Revelstoke in two days. Like, you need, no. you need two weeks. Well, you only get one day of sun in every two weeks, so pretty exactly. much. Right. So, yeah, it's all happened really quickly. I don't know if I've had a, really the chance to take it all in, but lots of snow, plenty of horsepower, and uh, a little bit of product testing. Yes, yes, <laughs> as always. You got to throw that in there for sure. So, you just, since you just came from the Chick Chocks, you know, you can't really relate the Chick Chocks to here, but what are your takeaways from, from each? So you can't compare the two, <laughs> that's for sure. Um, what is relatable is <laughs> when you get out with the same group of guys. That's what I love about this whole thing is you guys are egging on each other. You guys are making fun of each other, but you're always giving ski poles. You know, you're always helping each other out. Um, the camaraderie that comes with it. So you asked what was different, but, you know, what is the same is – going out with a group of guys and just ripping on these sleds and going to places that you didn't know that you'd be able to get to. Um, but that is where it is different. You know, out here, you guys are probably used to it by now, but I'm so focused in on what's in front of my skis right now. And you know, the next five feet, 10 feet, and then you just look up and Ooh, there's that like glimpse of a mountain. Um, and just the steepest terrain you've ever seen. And the next thing you know, you're getting blown in the face with just powder snow. You can't see anything. Um, it's pretty great, isn't it? Yeah, simply incredible, really. Like I said, I haven't. I don't think I've really processed what I've experienced these last two days with you guys. Well, you've just been on the road doing so much the last couple of weeks. It's like, can you really take this all in? Right, yeah. I mean, me and Chase have been together for seven days. We just shot with Boondock Nation up in the Chick Chocks. Um, nonstop. Go, 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 go. One thing after the other. And then we didn't choose to take a break. We just said, hey, let's go check out you guys, see what's going on in Revelstoke right now. Yeah, and you came here with a ton of energy, and you still <laughs> seem to have energy. <laughs> it's running low right now. My <laughs> voice is... No, I think it's good that it like we warmed down today, so then he's like yeah. tolerable on the podcast. <laughs> That's I, I agree. I mean, there were times I was laughing. Chase is like... I haven't heard him quiet this quiet for this long for seven days. Yeah. And that was it. I just, aside from the fact I was exhausted, but um, just caught in the moment of it all. You know, you almost have to just, when you stop, you can't. You just got to keep going. Um, yeah. Something else for sure. I'm excited to look through some more photos and videos and stuff. Yeah. It's, uh, we got some, some good stuff. I, I mean, anytime you point the camera on you, it seems to be entertaining. <laughs> entertaining. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I didn't know you could ride like that. It's I'm, I was seriously impressed. impressive. Like, how, you said you rode how many days this year? Uh, so Island Park for two days, <clears throat> and then Chick Chocks for three days, and now I'm here. Wow. So sixth and seventh day of the year. On average, how much do you ride a year? Um, so Maine had a really bad winter this year, um, which was unfortunate because we love our day trips. You know, we love our weekend trips and stuff like that. But just honestly, there there wasn't any snow. Um, so on average, it's not nearly enough. It never is. You know, we're extremely busy at the shop. We're always coming up with new ideas and doing new things. And it's all self-inflicted, like Matt said. No, yeah. But um, it keeps us off the snow sometimes. But we do we do make make time to go snowmobiling. I mean, call it 20 days. 
Um, but it's 20 rough days <laughs> for sure. And you've been riding there your whole life in Maine or? Yeah. I mean, it started with trail riding and all that stuff. And then it slowly transitioned into what are these guys doing up in the hills, you know, and then I went out and tried it. And then, um, you know, it's addicting once you start. So good group of guys that kind of took me in under their wing and um, it was just game on from there. And does Maine have like train like sort of similar to the Chick Chalks or? So, yeah, definitely comparable for sure. And, like, that's the thing. We could have – what we did with Boondock Nation, we, we could have done a very similar um, – not quite the same, but a similar thing in Maine. Um, but, again, it just – there was no snow. You know, going back to how many days do I ride, not nearly enough. It's stuff like this that I want to kind of get more involved. It was cool this year. Me, Ryan, and Jake, um, you know, at the top three at Backwoods right now, uh, we're able to go to Island Park. So, you know, me and Ryan went the year before and we said, we absolutely have to go again. Um, we've got Jackson Hole coming up uh, that we're all three of us are going out to. So we're going to hopefully do some riding out there Wednesday through Monday. And then my trip here, like there's no way that we can't come back. And there is no way I will ever come back here without bringing Ryan. Um, <laughs> that was my next question. Yeah. Definitely missed him during this trip. And I didn't realize it because this is actually the first time I've gone out kind of riding, like even just regular riding too, like without Ryan. Um, so we did fine. We had a great time. But yeah, definitely was missing him. He was on my shoulder as I was going for sure. <laughs> what else did you get up to with Boondock Nation? I saw maybe some product testing going on. That's right. So it's cool to talk about it right now. We just watched a second ago um, the release that they're going to. So it's what? Can I say what date it is? Yeah, yeah, this video is going to be out by the time their video is out. <laughs> so it's so. Saturday, March 2nd, and uh, tomorrow they'll be releasing the episode that does the Chick Chalk riding. But what was cool is we were able to bring them into the shop. Um, and right now we have a 7,000 square foot facility that we're operating out of, but we just built right next to it another 7,000. So, um, But it's completely empty, which was perfect because <laughs> we, it was a clean slate. So we set up everything. We got all of our sleds in. Um, and then we did some product testing that we've been meaning to do for a long time. So computer models are easy, um, stress models and all that stuff, but I still never really trust them. Um, because what we do on sleds, especially what you guys do on sleds, um, you can't just put it on, can't see necessarily it on a, replicate replicated. Yeah. Right? Like the colors and like, it's not the same to me. I need to see it. I need to make sure that it, it is true. So that's kind of a little bit what we did. Uh, we were surrounded by a bunch of expensive cameras, slow motion, this and that. Um, and we just did the quick math on, you know, the types of forces we could create within the shop. And we let it rip. And it was actually Jack's idea that we use stock bumpers, which is when it started getting expensive. Because <laughs> um, we were very, you know, we were confident, confident in, your yeah, in our own products. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, no, that was a really good time. It was cool to see uh, our products get put to the test in the actual environment and then to kind of follow it up with a direct comparison that was completely under our control, unlike most cases when I'm on my snowmobile. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I saw a couple clips there of you in some trees. Yeah, yeah, there's definitely <laughs> the Gas Bay jungle for sure. And that was, I was on my own sled for once instead of either your rental or uh, Stoke Mountain Adventures. Yeah, the poor thing. She's yeah. a good girl. I had to kick you off the rental today since all my sleds are broke down. <laughs> <laughs> that was troublesome. Your sled rode great, though. Again, the, the first time on a 165 turbo, and uh, I needed every bit of it. <laughs> yeah, yesterday was stupid deep. And then today today was manageable. I probably could have made it work on a 146, but... Uh, yeah. It's crazy how much it's set up in that area. Yeah. I don't know if it's set up or just didn't snow as much there, but... It, was, it sets up quick here. It was like in the open areas, you could feel the difference. And as soon as you dipped into the trees, you could just fall right back into yeah. um, the same snow. Definitely felt deeper down below. But You know what's deep is these tree wells around here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, like, you can't look at them. It's like Medusa. If you look at it, you're going to turn to stone. And <laughs> <laughs> because they are so deep. And the last thing that I want to get pulled out of is one of these things. I think it happened a couple times, though. You guys are very uh, hospitable for sure. That was great. As soon as I got here, um, Jason was fueling up the sleds, and I'm horrified of sled decks. So he was loading it for <laughs> me. And anytime I get stuck, there are like three or four guys around me. You even gave me a ski pole. Yeah, I, I told you that's I'd rare. give you one. Yeah, that's rare. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, the first 10 minutes was tough. <laughs> 45 minutes. <laughs> well, we, <laughs> the we first line, the, it, the first line in the trees, I see you launch up. 
a stump, <laughs> land sideways, gas it, like, pin and wiggle, stuck straight up and down. And I'm like, oh, okay. this is how it's going to go. <laughs> okay. And, and I, that's what I said. I'm like, God damn it. Um, <laughs> And the pin and wiggle doesn't work out here? Or the <laughs> we yours we had that work. discussion. Whatever I do on the East Coast and whatever Steve-O does on the East Coast that I've been trained does not work out here. And it was funny because no one would actually tell me, for the love, would you please stop <laughs> trying to just throttle out of this hole? Because I wouldn't stop until I was just absolutely buried. And then you're in the 165, so you're, you know, seven and a half feet down. At home, you probably just get down a foot and then hit dirt. Right, pay dirt. <laughs> so you pay can, you can pin and wiggle on dirt. You can't pin and wiggle when it's just you just know. Yeah, you just keep forever. going. It's like burrowing into the ground. Someone must have told you not to do that today because I heard you say, "Oh, you don't want me to pin it." Yeah, well, I was being sarcastic because <laughs> yeah. I could tell just by the way somebody's mumbled it under their breath. I'm like, <laughs> and I knew it wasn't the right thing. You don't have to be a genius I'm to sure realize you that. It out pretty quick. <laughs> Especially because I'm like, oh, I've got it. Don't worry about it. I'll be fine. You're like, there's no way you're getting out of this by yourself. I witnessed a couple pin and wiggle scenarios with you. Yeah. And then, <laughs> and then this afternoon, uh, we set off that uh, remote av- avalanche there. Is that your first time kind of seeing Avi, you know, Activity an avalanche? Like that, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, no doubt. Um, so I've taken, you know, the entry level Avi course um, twice, I think. You know, I've, I know my way around all the equipment and everything, but no, this is the first time that I've really seen. That was a real avalanche. Like, yeah, yeah, it was. It was when I saw it let go. I'm like, yeah, that's an avalanche, and we saw it go down the hill. We were like, yeah, okay. Then we actually went down the hill, looked at it, and we're like, oh, I was like, holy shit, this right, this is was... big. Yeah, if you were in that, you would have been, buried, yeah, for sure. <clears throat> it ran like. 200 feet through the trees yeah right and like from up top because all day it was hard trying to get depths and stuff which can explain most of my riding um but to try and i'm like well where did this thing break you know i'm, I'm trying to see it and you can see it's balled, balled up in this in the trees and everything but it had broken pretty much right below we, where we were looking at it yeah we were on the on the road there in a safe safe spot and we kind of just remote triggered it from above conditions are you know Pretty spicy. Pretty spicy right now. They have a special bulletin and whatnot, but we couldn't. Uh, we didn't see any activity throughout the day, really, at all. And it kind of gives you a bit of s- s- false security yeah. when. Uh... It was good to see that, and like good to experience it too. Because once we like went down and checked it out, like you've got to see that stuff. Yeah, I mean that was incredible. Like, I've got a huge respect for water and obviously a respect for snow, but, like, that was when I went boogie boarding down, you know, white waters, that's where I got my water respect. So, like, I feel like today was the day that I got my true snow respect, you know, even though I had it before, but not yeah. unless you see it or, like, it's, like, that close to you, it really puts it into perspective. And that's why I was extremely thankful to have all you guys there with me today at all points in time. That's um, Definitely the biggest avia I've ever seen. We set off some the other day that were large too. You know, always from a safe distance that uh, these have been remote triggered. But yeah, yeah that's my, just my big is. thing is you see that small hill that it was on, right? Yeah, and then you see some of the stuff that were could below, go, right? You know, oh for sure. That's what scares me. Yeah, I was yeah. a little tight for the rest of the day after <laughs> that. <laughs> you know, it was on the way out, and then uh, yeah, you know, there was one other hill we were pretty exposed on but at the same time the the danger there wasn't really the same not everybody would have really known that but when we had the warm-up that we had all of the steep rock faces snowballed and slid and then the stuff in the trees that was sheltered like what we triggered it didn't slide the same so it, it it it's more uh more danger in those locations right now for sure and it's funny because it's we recognized that right away this morning. We knew. Oh, yeah. In. Called it. Let's yeah. not touch that. Yeah. Yeah. There was the quick timeout. Let's yeah. get one thing straight. You know, we're getting it ready to enter this, enter that. And, yeah, called it for sure. But enough avalanche talk. Yep. Now we're, we're here to talk bumpers. Oh, goodness. I talk enough and about bumpers. And other things, too. Can we talk more about how much snow there is? <laughs> I mean, we kind of elaborated we talk, on that. Well, I was going to say we talk about that all year long, but we haven't talked that 
about that at all this year because we haven't had any deep snow. Right. Yeah. You couldn't have tri- timed your trip any better. Like two weeks ago, I'm like, yeah, you should maybe think about canceling because it's garbage. And I'm like, well, let's just go on a camping trip or something. We'll yeah, do something yeah, yeah. fun. It was more about, you know, <laughs> the getting the crew together. The team bonding. Yeah. Um, it ended up being a lot about the riding too because we had we did some really good riding. Yeah. And I mean, it's probably just because I'm not used to this stuff, but there wasn't a single thing that I wasn't going to hit. I mean, back home, you get these big mounds. You're like, oh, no, no, nope, you're not going to get me because it's just a stump. Yeah. But out here, it was just like. You could hit pretty much any of those mounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Every single one of them. <laughs> um, I was glad. I might have to double check sled. my sled. Yeah. yeah. This is fine. The one, the one, the one was my favorite. He just launches up on the air, in the air, total pogo stick, comes down, slaps, somehow holds on to it, it out. and and just held it wide open. Then does a bow tie and keeps going and like. <laughs> yeah, dude. <laughs> Did you get that? Yeah, I got it. Yeah, buddy. Well, see, I've been watching you guys, and you just you, most of the time you don't let go. No, you don't let you go. You keep no. doing your thing, and every, so never we, let go. I think we were talking that yeah. if if I if I let go, Chase set me up with this picture perfect shot, and I hit it. Wow, this, uh, here goes the snowmobile. My legs are up in the air, and I, I let go. <laughs> and. Uh, Derek and me and I were talking, and you just can't let go, man. You're going to hang on to that thing. So I was going to have to do 50 push-ups, which I don't know where that originated, the 50 push-ups, um, <laughs> if I let go again. So, yeah, then the next uh, maneuver was that trick. And as soon as you got into that, that may have actually been a stump, or, or I don't know what that was. but It was sweet. It was Whatever good. It was, it was good. It was free. This entire experience was just so cool to be able to just literally go with the flow anywhere you wanted and – I guess it's just so new to me, so that's why I'm hyped on it. Well, besides well, besides the sun, you really got majority of the good rotting around here. Like the first day was some good tight trees, and today was bigger exploration and right. more open stuff. So just got to get you back for a sunny day. Uh, broken parts. Jordan broke a, what was it, his 12th A-arm? <laughs> <laughs> Eleven. Uh, yeah, he's had a string of bad luck for sure. Streak. So yeah. it was cool because, uh, you know, where it, with with any snowmobile trip, like as soon as you get out to the spot, everybody's stoked, they're ready to go, but more than likely someone's going to break something. And it's always funny to see, like, all right, who's going to sit over there and who's going to dig through their bag and who's going to get in on the scenes and, you know, get their hands and this and that. And I enjoyed just sitting by and watching you guys do what you do. I relaxed a little bit. Um, but it was cool. You're a surgeon, Matt, over there with the water. You know, who's got this? Who's got that? You guys are digging through your bags, making things happen. And there was a couple of arrangements I haven't seen before. Um, the duct tape wire combo with the stick notched out. Yeah, we haven't done that one, actually. Lots of times when, you know, you bust off the lower A arm, you just put the big stick back from, from uh, <coughs> the spindle up yep. to your running board. But uh, that fix yesterday, that was pretty bulletproof. I feel like he could have honestly just rode the rest of the day with that setup. Yeah. Except for the fact that the skis were duck like. Well, yeah, that wasn't wasn't great. He could have fixed the toe in on the skis. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, I mean, you didn't have any steering when you were going, so he could. What's a little bit of toe and go? <laughs> yeah. Um, that was a quick fix, though. We got that good for today. Yeah, but we were trying to get out of the spot, and here I am getting caught in every single rut, and here you are with no steering behind me. Uh, you did great. I'm not allowed to complain anymore. These guys <laughs> told me. Uh, we didn't say you're not allowed to complain. Okay, I can't use my radio. You're not allowed to cry wolf. Okay, maybe I asked for one ski tug, <laughs> and now I'm good. Nowadays, it. nowadays. Now I don't ask for anything. I, I barely even. I, I, bar- I barely even want to get on the radio to answer you guys when you say... Derek, how you doing? Or something like that. <laughs> I just want to hear, I'm good, man. Let's go. That's all I want to hear from you. I'm up here waiting for you. A yeah. <laughs> couple times, I will say, I have beat you guys both to the top. <laughs> Those are fighting words. What did I tell Matt? What we, I don't know what the heck we were doing. We were taking a quick break, and I had the high mark. And I said something real quick, and he, <laughs> he kind of brushed it off, and then he drove down. And I'm like, Jason... Really? You guys are just going to let me have this all day? I said, Matt, I got the high mark. Fires up his snowmobile. And three seconds later, you're running over the tunnel. 
<laughs> coming back through <laughs> jumping over yeah. the tunnel. Someone, uh, that story, I reposted it and somebody replied, now can we see it in normal speed? Come oh. on. <laughs> Too funny. Yeah. The only thing that isn't you true about Brent. that video is I had to turn the volume off because I was swearing so much, <laughs> um, which I am working on. It's hard to, you know, kind of reel it back in when you're out in this kind of environment because it's just, there's a lot going on, a lot of excitement in the air. Um, it's just too fucking good. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. Now talk about, you know, racing to the top and you beating them. And uh, it was sweet today. So funny. You guys. I never are- really beat them. I just like to say that. I believe you. You guys, we all, have... we all know Derek, <laughs> dude. Actually, a cu- one time I did beat you up there, and one time just to certain benchmarks. Dear diary, today <laughs> I beat Muskoka to the top. Yeah, there. Like it's not like that, but it is like <laughs> <laughs> it is like something that I'm like stoked on because I'm a little bit young, like quite a bit younger than you guys, and it's like a constant battle to to try to. Be as good as you, or or. Oh, dude, your riding's come a long way in the last two years. You're, you're doing really, really good. Last couple of weeks on the 165 NA, even like. I appreciate that because he never gives me a compliment. <laughs> it's only because there's other people watching. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it was uh, just him and I, I'd be like, dude, you fucking suck. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! But that's motivating too. Oh, it it's is. Just, it's that. Completely. That's that. Indirect motivation. Yeah, that's what friends are for. That's how you know you're, you're a true friend, right? Yeah. That is very true, actually. That's like um, how you're the only one that busts my balls on the close friends group, and that's how I know we're just. <laughs> no, you need that little extra. It's right, just like you know, and that's because that's because that's how we become better. Um, I'm just looking out for everybody's best interests. Pretty much, I I feel it. I don't, I exactly when you told Chet it's keep up or perish. Keep up or perish. And I don't say perish. I feel like I don't know if that's a Canadian thing or something. He's like, you didn't even know what per- that perish? perish. Oh, you mean die. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, keep up or die. That's the American translation. Um, yeah. what's, the, what's the main uh, license plate? Uh, no, that's New Hampshire. Oh, L- New live Hampshire. free or die. Okay. But uh, yeah, keep Same. up or perish. And uh, that's also motivating. <laughs> because it's the truth. Because you're like, okay, let's go, boys. And it's like, well, hang on, where are we going? And it's like, follow just the follow tracks. the tracks because it's true. We're right done of them. We broke trail the whole time. And uh, that's the best way to do it. Um, Our zone today was pretty tracked up, though. So funny. Why? Because those two <laughs> people were there before. Yeah. I wish Chase was here to elaborate on that. Is he still in the hot tub? Yes. I can't believe his track fully derailed. <laughs> That was a new one. Yeah, I've never seen that before. There's, that's I've like, seen it a couple of times, yeah. but if he was just doing like a re-entry, it doesn't, yeah. you know, unless he hit something on the lip that was super hard and just away. Chase things. I mean, I've seen yeah. it like kick over. Well, that's the second. This was like, <laughs> yeah, that's the second time for Chase this year. He derailed his alpha, which that's kind of just alpha things, I think. But yeah. Obviously him. Yeah. How about the right uh, the Revelstoke God sending a message to Chase as soon as we were about to get into the zone? <laughs> <laughs> so Chase showed up with a 146 Catalyst 600, um, which he does. He can he can ride that thing. Um, I've ridden with him in Island Park, and um, he's like a ballerina. But there's no way he was going to survive in that thing out here. No. Absolutely no way. <clears throat> So just as we're getting ready to drop into the trail, you know, Chase throws his hands up in the arm and one of the suspension components had blown out. And um, I was like, oh, here we go. <laughs> just getting to the spot. I'm like, I'm going riding, Chase, like, you know, to myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, what well, we called up um, Carter with Stoked. And uh, by the time Chase got down there, two minutes later, we had a 165 boost and it was game on. Yeah, he, he, he even said he loved that machine. Yeah, like it was working well for him. Uh, uh, I've seen him ride the one a one forty six cat. It's, you know, it's it's a one forty six. It's a one forty six. It 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 doesn't it doesn't go the places we're going on our turbos. No, In yeah, those turbos are a game changer. I could listen to that all day. That could be my ringtone. <laughs> Mine was more like. <laughs> there was a lot going on in that engine. So 
<clears throat> when you're seeing components fail like that on sleds, like is that constantly running through your head with being a snowmobile product developer? Oh, like, yeah. So <laughs> I was just going to say, I wish I could shut it off, but I don't. Yeah. Um, because it's the perfect instance that we're literally experiencing within that moment. Like we are all just got here. You know, we traveled a long ways to get here. Sleds are fueled up. We got lunch. We got everything lined up. You guys know where we're going. Um, but instantly, boom, something's broken. Yep. And everything just stops. And the plan just starts slowly deteriorating and falling apart. And it's like the worst feeling yeah. in your chest. And, and, and it, <laughs> so that feeling, we've all been there. We've all done it. And my favorite part is trying to create, you know, instances or, you know, whatever it may be to avoid that. Um, it doesn't have to be a billet part. It just so happens to be most of the time. <laughs> so yeah, it's, it's, it's honestly a great opportunity. I think the more time that we spend on the snow, um, the better, a lot of our products we have are pretty much created because of stuff we've broken, you know, something yeah. Steve-O snapped in half, Gary, Craig Johnson snapped in half, Ryan, you know, the matrix subframes that we're selling right now that, you know, Caleb and Keith were just posting about, um, Ryan had a one week vacation and he went out for a ride and it was 10 miles in and he hit a tree and smashed his matrix up for it. You know, the, the stirrups, we still don't really know what to call the damn things. <laughs> so he called me and said, Chet, look, <clears throat> I'm day one of my vacation, but I, I need to get back on the snow, you know? And we, we built this product. It didn't look like it does right now, but, um, Start somewhere. That's how it all starts. So, yeah. like, that component that Chase blew out, like, Chase isn't the only 146, you know, isn't the only alpha, isn't the, the only guy that's going to ruin the day for everybody else. Um, same, like, with your steering. You know, that's an issue with an older snowmobile. So, sometimes, you know, we have to go where the demand is. But... Um, it could. It's probably even still the same. Yeah. Probably. Same design, right? It's just the steering post. You know, if you throw a well, I think billet an, bushing, like billet housing down there, I'm sure it would be a lot way stronger. Uh, I think there's a, a new stronger. steering rack for 2025. For the free ride. Yeah. It, it's really game changing. Yeah. I think Jay or Blaine <laughs> said something, posted something about that. Yeah, uh, but so where do you draw the line, though? You know what I mean? Like, there's literally right. thousands and thousands yeah, of Yeah, you make a good you point. Do. You see one thing, it's like, okay, that happened once, put it in the memory bank, but then you see it again, it's like. Never again. Yeah, it's tough. You can't solve everything. No. So you get those one-off things every now and then. That's just part of what we do. And, you know. and the snowmobiles just are changing so quickly year to year, too, that you know what you make today might not be applicable tomorrow. That's what keeps it exciting, though. And what's cool, too, is you know we still sell XM front bumpers and rear bumpers. Yeah. Really, yeah. You know, mm. um, They're slowly phasing out, but it's funny. You know, They still hang around. Uh, just because it's not a new sled doesn't mean it's not a new sled yep. to some people. It's new to yep. somebody. And so it is cool that we can make a product and then continue it for years after that to solve the same problem that screwed me over, you know, nine years ago. Yep. <laughs> it's still very real. So, Is that when you made your first bumper nine years ago? Uh, you know, kind of like uh, this weekend's riding experience, it's all a blur because snowmobiling has been my life. You know, I've been breaking stuff for years now. Um we never really figured out when exactly Backwoods started. But, uh, yeah, sure. To 2014, I think I built my first rear bumper. So, But that's not when Backwoods started. You started with a rear bumper. Yeah, because I tried to... One of my buddies got stuck in his car um, <clears throat> in the snow. So I hooked up... Tried to tow yeah. a car out. Yeah, no. yeah. <laughs> yeah. With, a, with a stock wheel. bumper. So I tautened the line, you know, and I... <laughs> and this was my this was my 120 main things. My, I was gonna say my 120 uh, XP with an inch and three quarter, right? Which back in the day, like, woo, yeah. the size yeah. of that paddle, you know? <laughs> um, and I couldn't pull him, so I got some slack, and then I, <laughs> and that tunnel just went, just tacoed right up towards the ass end. Um, so yeah, I built some god awful steel steel rear bumper. Is that what you sold first? Was a steel? No, no, no. Well, so steel front bumper too. You gotta make sure you have your tetanus shot before you handle that thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we've come a long way. <laughs> 
but still same mentality, just solving problems that, you know, if you watch that episode of us riding in the gas bay, <clears throat> um, I mean, it's tight trees, you know, and if you see some of the, some of us, you know, we do hit stuff. I'm not world-class rider, right? Um, but our products help give people the confidence to at least try and keep up with the world-class riders. And like today I felt so exposed I had a rear bumper, which was great, but I had no front bumper. And here I am. We're going through the tally wax. I'm like, ah, yeah. And then I look down. I'm like, oh, my God. I don't have a bumper on this thing. Is that I, why you rode, rode better yesterday? I do. Uh, and honestly, I kid you not, it, 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 it's a subconscious thing, uh, knowing that you're protected. And especially after we shot this, this footage with uh, Boondock Nation. Like, we literally took the stock bumpers and smashed stuff. And, yeah. like, here I am on a rental sled. When I was on your sled, I didn't necessarily care. <laughs> yeah, I could I, tell. But I also had a bumper, so, like, I knew. <laughs> but here I am on a rental sled. I signed my life away. Um, and it just changed things a little. I was like, okay, no, I got to go around this a little bit more. I can't hit that, you know. Um, when I do a hop over or whatever you guys call it, you know, I'm not always... I don't know what way I'm going to go sometimes, <laughs> you know, you don't figure that out until you're up there. And then, uh, if there's just so happens to be a tree, the way you decide to go. <laughs> right. And like, here we are. I mean, I don't know where, I don't really don't know where we went today, but we were out there. Um, that's a long ways away to have, you know, a dented pipe, you know, uh, a little um, air box. Yeah. 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 So yeah, sure. no, I've, I've definitely smashed my fair share of bumpers and luckily it's only ever just been the bumper since I've been running one. But uh, it's it definitely gives me some confidence knowing that when I make that mistake, I, I usually kind of correct, but I can't correct and correct in time to fully save the sled. Just save it enough where I could slow it down, right? Yep. To not totally destroy the sled. And yep. then the bumper covers the rest of it. Yeah. Right. And like that's just a front bumper, but rears like you might not really make a mistake, but yeah, you could just. Literally have your sled stuck somewhere at 12 o'clock and just pry it over. It over. Yeah. And like I bent a tunnel that way back before I used to run bumpers. Oh, yeah. And I was worried about that today because the 165 NA doesn't have a back bumper on it. Yeah. And yeah. I was just, well, I was reefing on it so hard yesterday that I bent the bars. Mm -hmm. And then I was looking at it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make bars yet? <laughs> yeah, not yet. Yeah. Uh, that's how I, we're not going to get into that, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's how I cut the tip of my thumb off, making bars. But that's why we don't make bars, too. No, I think we did some good product testing this week. I tested some rails yesterday, the rail braces. Yep. Yep. They work. Yep, for sure. Um, what the hell was I just going to elaborate on? Rear bumpers? Rear bumpers. Oh, yeah. Very good. Thank you. Um, so talking about, well, now I'm going to talk about it, but you guys remember when the Slash first came out, right? So oh, yeah. you get a new chassis and you don't, you know, they got this new tunnel, this cut ass end and sure that some guys have ridden on it, but they haven't done enough riding on it. Um, and then it was the, um, the tunnel, <laughs> it was somehow they called it a, I don't remember what they called it, but it's a provocative name that I'm not going to repeat because I think I'm doing it wrong. But anyways, oh, <laughs> a, a tunnel Woody or something. I don't fucking know. <laughs> <laughs> but the tunnels were just absolutely folded back. You know, they were oh, yeah. come over backwards and they'd be Saw waffled up. So that's how we came up with our bumper. You know, sure, it's, shit still happens. But for the most part, our products have been, you know, really helping out with that. Um, well, you still need a weak point, right? Somewhere. Well, some the energy goes somewhere. But what I'm getting at is, so we kind of solved that problem, right? Well, now we have a, a new chassis coming out again with the catalyst where the tunnel design isn't a whole lot different other than the fact that it is actually, a, you know, kind of cut. Um, it's thinned out. But so far with the 600s, there's a handful of cases where we're seeing the exact same thing. Um, that tunnel just caught right and absolutely folded up. Um, so it's kind of foreshadowing, you know. Personally, I think that the 858s, I think Articats are going to take off next year. I think that a lot of guys that were cat guys that went to Polaris, you know, now they've got an opportunity to get back. I think that that new chassis is pretty awesome. Um, other than the fact there's a 600 in it, but now they've got their stuff figured out, you know, the 858 is coming around. So in yep. our forecast, we think that there's going to be a lot more of those. And unfortunately we're already seeing trends that are showing just like with the slashes where um, I got to think of that name where the tunnels are getting <laughs> ripped up. Yeah. I saw it. Looking at Chase's catalyst yesterday, I'm like, 
looking at it, look how beat up it already is. I'm like, <laughs> man, is this what I got to look forward to with my cot next year? Uh, yeah. But yeah, I think there's going to be a lot of guys uh, switching back to at least try the 858 next year. So yeah, excited for it. Lots of people in the comments. That's every video. 858, 858. Right. When when you get in the catalyst. But you, need, you need to get rid of some of your sleds before you get to it. Yeah, do you want to buy one? Well, I think we would, yeah, I think it would be perfect. Then we could do some type of giveaway at Heydays. Sounds good. <laughs> it's foreshadowing. Got, yeah, you guys will have to come to Heydays to. Which camera's find looking out. at me? The one across. This one? Yeah. yeah. I look so small. <laughs> Here, I zoom in. You're small. It's okay. You don't zoom in. I zoom in. That would be super cool oh, yeah. if we uh, gave away some of your sleds. At least one of <laughs> some them. Some of my sleds. <laughs> Well, how else are you gonna? <laughs> you gonna give them away? We may have to. You get a sled, and you get a sled. Yeah. Oprah. Well, not not easy, man. <laughs> don't get the people all fired up. You could give them the race sled. Might have to give that you, thing away. You don't want that sled. We need to put in a track extension on that and send it up the hill climbs. Which, well, I'm not gonna. It's too bad that I've heard that the media guys aren't gonna be racing Rimshaw at Jackson Hole. Now, don't jump to conclusions. I might be wrong, but I. Um, I wanted to see you go up the hill. Damn it. I, I wanted to go up the hill. I mean, I said last year, I'm like, yeah, next year I, I, I should go up the hill. But according to you, it's just not in the cards. Eh? Allegedly. I mean, we'll see. But um, <laughs> I mean, I'd be, I'd be scared. I'd climb some steep stuff, but not steep ice and trenches, stumps, yeah, and, and rocks. Yeah, it's more like dirt climbing. Not. I don't dirt. know how they do it. It's an it's impressive when you see it in person. Do you have any backwards stuff in the Rimshaw stuff? Um, so what do we got? Well, I think Brett just got his new rail braces that we just came out. Um, full bolt. So what's cool about Rimshaw, right? There's rules to it, and we operate in <laughs> in a world that you know we kind of make the rules. But now all of a sudden, you know, you can't do certain things. So it changes the way that you're able to build stuff. So with some of their classes, and I don't know the real rules, so don't quote me on any of this, but you ha you can only use add-ons. So it's like, oh, perfect. Well, you can't build it the way you want to build it, but you can modify it so that it fits within these rules, and now these guys can use it to do what they do, which is <laughs> the most ridiculous stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I'm hoping to get more involved with that. Every time I get on the phone with someone from Ribshaw, anytime I see him out riding and stuff, it's just these guys are passionate. You know, they're driven. They're, they, they, they ride these sleds like no one I've ever seen. Um, so those are kind of my type of people. You know, I find it very – we don't ride the same, but I think the passion's there. Um, you know, same with you guys too. That's probably why we get along so well. Um, so, yeah, I'm excited for Rimshaw. Um, just beefing up stuff. I know that I've got a good group of – you know, four or five guys that are giving me some serious input on what they're breaking. Um, and we're just kind of going with the flow and trying to help them out as much as we can. Yeah. What they're breaking during rim shot and what not even just riding for fun too, right? Yeah, oh yeah, for sure. Because, you know, rim shot is one thing, but they still break the same things while they're riding normally. Yeah. Well, hang on. normally. <laughs> yeah. Um, which you had an opportunity to ride with all those guys. I'd never yeah. experienced FOMO so much in my life. But there's no way I was ready to go ride with all you guys. Uh, it was a time when, when the USA boys came up here and we had very little snow. It was kind of just like rim shot in the back country. Yeah. <laughs> oh, for sure. For sure. But uh, yeah, it was cool to see, see them actually ride, not just during a race, actually like see them ride and hang out around them. And, uh, you know, they're just, they're just like us, just diehard sledders. And right. I mean, they might have <coughs> a little more energy than than most. Some of them. <laughs> there's no there's no real stopping. They stop for lunch to eat their soup, and then uh, and then it's soup. go time again. Yeah, they all just pack soup for the hell. Hmm. See, I, I brought soup. food to Maybe ride with you guys, but I feel like I just never had a chance to eat it. Yeah, that's how that's how it is. Yeah, so I just had extra weight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, d I bring no lunch some some days. Today, I forgot my lunch in my truck, so that was good. Ooh. But, you know, I'm an athlete and uh, got to <laughs> stay focused. Jerry's on the suit. Maybe he's onto something. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. he's a stew. He's always making stew. Oh, yeah. stew guy. Yeah. Slop is vegan. what we call it. Yeah. Vegan, vegan slop. Vegan slop. Sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> he made us lunch once last year, and you open it. It looks green. 
and then you go to eat it, and just the smell was so disgusting. You, you like it didn't taste that bad, but you <laughs> couldn't couldn't eat it. It would just smelled so 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 disgusting. He it's, ate it though. He ate it. Oh yeah, of course he did. Speaking of uh, Jerry, so finally I get to meet Jerry. Right, I'm stoked, um, super excited. So today we go a ride with Jerry. <laughs> Right, hit the hell, which he's a he's a ripper. Um, so I get caught up in a tree, so I spin around and sure as shit, I'm dropping down and oh, who's that? Jerry Mired, right up. <laughs> so I said, okay, I gotta go help Jerry. I jump off my sled, you know, just like you guys helping him. You know, we finally get him done or get him out of the hole and this and that. So I'm like, perfect. I got me and Jerry. Got one. Me and Jerry are boys now. Helped him out of the hole. And then he just leaves you. And then he starts calling me Chad. <laughs> <laughs> right? Isn't that that's that's referenced multiple he, he, times? He, he, said, he said it once. And, and I'm like, I questioned him. I said, Chad? He's like, oh, Chad, Chad. And but then I started calling you Chad. Okay, and you never you never acknowledged me once though. You just <laughs> It's all the same. Chaz is the one I don't like. <laughs> Everybody hear that? Oh yeah, here we go. Um, yeah, no, it was good. Uh, and your dad made it out too with us. Oh yeah, that was incredible. Those guys are shredders. I love when he comes and ri- I mean, I love that he's still riding, but sometimes it's a lot of digging. <laughs> you know what I love is when you ask him if he's okay and needs a hand. He He'll says, never say. He says no. Yeah. I say okay. <laughs> I, he, he'll never admit that he needs help, but I always know, like, today he came over the radio and he said, no, I just need to shovel for 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I was next to him and he told me he was fine. I said, okay. Yeah, the 30-minute shovel. <clears throat> That'll happen, though. Oh, it happens. I think it happened to you a few times this week because you refused to call for help. <laughs> no, I didn't refuse to call. For, I'm not allowed to call for help. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes it's just like there's... There's no way I'm calling for this right now. I gotta, I gotta reset up the scene so people don't know what we, I actually did. We don't call for help, <laughs> no. Uh, Unless you're about to die, or if you uh, break something, you're about to perish. Perish. Even then, I think I'd rather die than to call <laughs> for you guys to help me. Yeah, the only time we call is when we blow off clutch blo- bolts. Yeah, you get two in there. Or yeah. At least I saw. That's this year's, yeah. yeah. It's a running yeah. total. Can, can you fix that? Like, yeah. Can you make us a clutch bolt? No. Clutch. A whole clutch. No. So that I'm actually interested in, um, because you could do a just fully billet clutch. I just love billet. <laughs> Sign me up. So <laughs> that's been one of our biggest pushes is just the whole CNC. I mean, we do everything in house, um, and it is so cool to just see a part, you know, come from a broken something turn into an idea, a conversation, um, you know, you design it, you write the CAD, you write the CAM, you take the chunk of billet, you drop it in, you put it in, and just the whole process is incredible. And then once you finally dial it in, you know, you're just, you're replicating it. You set up your systems to make sure it's perfect every time. And clutches would be cool, but I have way too many projects right now going on. How many yeah. side projects do you have on, on the go? Uh, so what we started doing <laughs> is creating sheets. If you ask any of the guys at the shop, I love Google Sheets. Um, but we have a running list. And the thing is, is that you can have all your ideas, right? And we have them all. Um, once you have all your ideas, you have to prioritize them, right? Because some are more important than others. And it'll change and fluctuate. Um, once you have that big list, you need to hide that big list. And you can only take two projects on that list to now view, and then from there, you break those down and open them up and figure out what goes into that project before it can be completed. Then you assign those subcategories to people who are then in charge of it. And then we just keep track of how it progresses. Because if you look at that big list, it's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. You're like, yeah. I can do 92% of anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> you just can't finish it. After that, it's like, you know, somebody else take the wheel. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of side projects and, and ideas and stuff. There's just, you know, there's only so much time to do things correctly. Um, well, getting it right's the hard, hard part. Important. Well, yeah. Es- especially now. You know, we're building a brand and we're building products that, you know, we boast the fact that it's going to keep you out riding longer, safer, you know, get you back when the going gets tough. 
So we really need to make sure, you know, that when that we sell something, happens. yeah, that that happens. You know, we can't just back in the day, you know, it was if you build something and you get it out, you know, because we can't afford the, the next order of pipe. Um, and now it's, you know, one year, two year. You know, I've got a couple of projects right now. I keep teasing people about, you know, our billet A arms. Yeah. Um, which there's so much that goes into that. You know, that's I've been working on that for like two and a half years. Um, which is crazy. You know, Matrix subframes finally we're starting to catch traction on that. That was two years ago that we started it. Um, but it's cool because it's as we're as you can see, you know, by the time we do get it to the consumer, it's been tested through guys like you. Thank you for that. Um <laughs> It's been confirmed. It's worked. You know, we've we've put the time into it, so you can just you can feel comfortable and confident about it. So, all that being said, this big list. What do you have coming down the pipe? Is there uh, anything yeah. you can tell uh, us? Give us one. Like I can see your eye in right now, going. <laughs> like we gotta know. We gotta know what you're working let's on. See, let's see. The, pull, pull, pull the list out. Let me let me have a peek. I could pull it up. There's no way I'm. Sh well, I could. <laughs> I'll just let, let our eyes have a peek. So the <laughs> thing is, though, is if I look at this, now I'm, I might not go to bed tonight. <laughs> you don't have to look. So no, no, I you, shouldn't. I you shouldn't. must have something that's coming that you're excited about that's um, maybe not out there yet. So, yeah. Yeah. It has to do with... Uh, it's focused towards Rimshaw, but it's something that applies to everybody. Um, and it's really just... We're really... We're trying to fill it everything and the reason because this you know i i threw up a post uh it was a shared story so it's probably disappeared but i i'll put it back up um cast right it's hard right you punch it you know you <laughs> but when you break it open it's porous you yeah. know you look inside of it when you're laying a cast you know that material could be dirty and it, it doesn't always guarantee that strength so a lot of the parts that we're replacing are billet and excuse me, they're cast. So we're replacing them with billet. And um, we're putting a lot of time into these things. We're putting a lot of, you know, our matrix subframes, th th those are eight hours a piece of machine In time. Mach yeah, That's wild. Just for one set, eight hours. Wow. You know, we work an eight hour day, you know, or we claim we do, but um, we work way more than that. That's, that's for both sides or? That's for a complete set. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, so what is the future down the pipeline? I can't, I'm not going to, after we, jump off this i'll tell you but yeah. <laughs> um just very high quality you know lifetime warranty you know don't quote me on that that's what we're <laughs> shooting for though like i really i want people to know that if they're the original buyers of this stuff this is the last thing you're ever going to buy um that's it. and we'll stand yeah. behind yeah. it um so you know and the other thing too about that we're going to put in the extra time that other people won't you know these a arms i'm talking about they're high, they're high clearance, right? True high clearance, like the truest. Like they're so high that we need a billet tie rod or a billet, um, oh, drawing a blank. Tie rod, no? Yeah, thank yeah, you. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that you need a billet tie rod in order to make the clearance because at some point in time, you know, if you do try and get that true high clearance, you hit your tie rod, you yeah. know, and it's a lot of extra work if you want to go any higher than that. Um, so that's just like another example of going the extra mile and, and kind of putting everything into what we're doing. So, yeah, a lot more cooler um, billet parts, smaller parts, just working with Jack uh, from Boondock um, about some Gen 4 products that are similar to some of the Polaris products we have. Um, and that's what's cool, too, is it's not just me or Jake or Ryan that are dreaming up these ideas. You know, everybody. it's you guys. You know, it's, it's, it's everybody. It's all the guys that help support us. Um, and that's where the real magic happens. <laughs> One thing that I really love about Backwoods, man, is the support you give to the whole industry. The stuff you for guys real, do though. for everybody, <laughs> it's insane. Like It's crazy. I don't know how, how you even do it. Your heydays booth, the power hour, um, just all the support all around is just insane. It's it's really changing the industry, what you guys are doing. It's a Very family. Nice. So and you bring up a killer point, so... Here I am in Revelstoke. You better believe every single sled that goes by them. You know, well, they got a bumper on, you know, this and that. And, and I was stoked. There's tons of our products out here. Like, yeah. and I just was telling Jack and Dylan, any backwoods product you've ever seen came from this building right here. So when we get out here, I was telling Chase as he's, he was there for the whole thing, like, yep, you know where that came from. 
you know where that was made. You know, like, and they're everywhere. And I see these guys, and I feel so weird because I'm like, hey, you know, I have a nice product, you know, Chet from Backwoods, you know, I own the place, da da da. And sometimes they look at me weird. And I'm like, <laughs> so it's, but I am. I'm so proud, and like I see these guys, That's and cool. I don't even know them, and I'm just like. I'll do anything for you. Like, it's so cool. But you really will do anything for anyone. <laughs> <laughs> Only if you have a backwards pro- No. <laughs> <laughs> so you bring up a good point, though. <clears throat> you know, what we're realizing now is this: everything that we're doing, it's more than just products now. Like, we're starting to dig so much deeper than we ever have before. And what I'm excited about is the stuff, kind of stuff that pushes the industry. And not just through our products, but through the guys who are pushing just as hard as we are. Um, the Heydays Power Hour, right? It's a huge production that we threw on, oh, yeah. uh, partnered with Boondock Nation. Um, <clears throat> we got some huge, you know, big names for that first instance. That was, we were rolling the dice, you know, trying something new. And, um, you know, now we have a platform where we can showcase <clears throat> the hard work that somebody, that riders have done. Riders, riding groups, you know, anything snowmobile related, we can take in a, cult, a time span of a year and give them a platform to showcase it to the public. Um, and that's something I'm extremely interested in, is helping guys kind of, you know, showcase their work. Um, it's incredible. You know, these camera guys, it's nuts. The, you know, what you guys do too, it's, it's, it is, it's crazy. And I think not enough people understand what goes into it. Um, and it's a beautiful thing when, like, you take the time to really set it up for a certain, you know, cause, not cause or reason or competition. Um, you know, there's no more X Games for snowmobiles, no. um, but there was uh, Alpine sled and style. Right. So yeah. absolutely, um, a great competition. Right. Um, we need more of that stuff. Yeah. When when I think back a couple years ago, you know, when Barant's over there and the X Games and Turcotte and all the other guys. Um, kids were saying, you know, hey, I want to be like them, you know, and now it's gone. So now what is the, you know, there's plenty of motivators, don't get me wrong, um, outside of just the true passion, but I want guys to be excited for something, you know, for this video, Backwoods' is video production, you know, whatever. It's just something bigger than, you know, what's going on right now. So that kid can say, hey, I'm going to snowmobile, I'm going to train, I'm going to figure this out so I can one time be a part of this team, you know. Well, I think times have changed a bit because now what we're seeing is kids on YouTube and he's the hero. Yeah. Yeah. Like I, I've personally witnessed standing in the Boulder parking lot with Brett Turcott and Matt and kids walked right by Brett <laughs> to go talk to Matt <laughs> and they're just pumped. They're remember, pumped. They're remember that kid I called um, yeah, New, New yeah, Hampshire yeah. grass drags. Um, some kid came up and, do, uh, where do you ride? And I was like, oh, well, Jackman. And, you know, he says, you don't ride Revelstoke? I said, no. <laughs> <laughs> but I got a buddy out there. And he goes, yeah, Muskoka? I said, I said yeah, actually. <laughs> and uh, he goes, you're friends with Muskoka? And I said, well, hang on a second. And I, I FaceTimed yeah. you, right? <laughs> and when Matt popped up on my phone, the kid about passed out. Um, and, yeah, it's it was cool. You know, our... <clears throat> some of uh, some of the guys that are operating at the same levels that we are with the same amount of passion like we have the power of influence on a lot of these younger kids you know and that is the future of snowmobiling yep. you know we we all almost have a responsibility like we're in charge of where this stuff goes like don't get me wrong OEMs are you know fueling it but truly it's it's us that are doing it it's the riders it's the content creators it's the people that are you know really truly passionate about this sport um, otherwise, if it wasn't, we'd all still be in <coughs> leather jackets, you know, and uh, <laughs> at least that's what I think. Well, we're really showing people like what you could get out there and do and accomplish and just the fun you can have and, and not even necessarily always be about the riding, but just like not be the best riders, not be, yeah, you, know, you know, I'm just a pretty average rider. Like, obviously, <laughs> <laughs> I, I ride, I ride fucking. Uh, what, like 70, 80 days a year? If I'm not sl at least slightly above average, I'd be pr You're pretty sad, wrong. right? Yeah. Right. So, uh, you know, I'm not, not super athletic, but I, I've got out there over the years and just slowly chiseled away. And right. Became a pretty good rider. But when I started making videos, you know, I was no different than 
than you. And what the hell does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> I was uh, I was an average rider, right? And uh, yeah, and and people I think kind of really related to that. And well, that's what I think. People can relate to that whole group, right? Yeah, they relate to everybody. That's that's why it's good, like riding with us, the Jerry's yep. pro riders. Someone can always build a connection to somebody in in the group and and relate, right? And driven right and that's why it's your responsibility to race at jackson <laughs> <laughs> or else that's gonna die too <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny no i'm excited <clears throat> you know as i look around it right now is an incredible time to be involved in the future of this industry you know or just in the industry whatever i feel like there's a lot of high energy there's a lot of young guns right now i mean you know i'm 32 um you know, every a lot of the guys I talk to are younger than me, um, but there's still, you know, a lot of guys that are, are older too. But a super exciting time. Every every person I talk to is ready for the next best thing. We just all don't know what it is yet. But that's what's cool because I think the more we talk, the more we come together. Um, that's when the ideas start flowing, and uh, and that's when things start happening. So you've so. definitely got some ideas. Yeah. Well, you know, you can't. Just put it on the always, list. Always, always fire. On the list. Put it on the list. Yep. No, only look at two at a time. <laughs> <laughs> but so I'm excited for sure. Let's see what we can. Uh, yeah, we're all excited. It's going to be uh, interesting to see where things go in the next five years and what we can accomplish. Yeah, five years. Backwards snowmobile. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We talked about yeah. that. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're damn near close. <laughs> it's probably on the list. It's on the list. <laughs> you guys. Do you have my list? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so what do we have to look forward to? What's uh I'm leaving tomorrow. I'm leaving tonight. You're driving to out of town right after this. What are you guys doing tomorrow? Show what do you think up. we're doing? What do we do every day? Do my hands look swollen? <laughs> you couldn't handle that every day? Oh my god. Did you get a blister? <laughs> so I didn't want to talk about this. I did. I got a blister. Um, and I usually don't get blisters. Mm. But I got a blister. Probably not from the sled. But <laughs> no, it's definitely from the sled. Yeah, I'm beat up. It's from the so, massage gun. Yeah. You've been working on that And I need thing. to fire that thing back up. <laughs> so I'm not going riding tomorrow, but good for you guys. Um, but you're going skiing. That's right. Yeah, I am going skiing. You're going on a vacation. Yeah, this is actually a vacation. Unlike this. This has been... This is work. But um, we've got, what, Jackson coming up soon, don't we? Yeah, a couple of weeks, yep. three, three weeks. That I'm excited for. You're not racing. We already covered that. But uh, that's quite the event um, to get everybody together. Um, I mean, there's a you, – you haven't been. No. You haven't been. No. What a hoot. They're missing out. Something about gate 30, almost getting run over by these guys. And you're trying to help out, but don't you get to stay away. So that guy got ran over last year out in the woods. Yeah, like fully. And then you run over the the line. And you're like, hey, you need one of these. And you fucking throw a hat at him. <laughs> he loved it, yeah. He had earned it. Um, but I'm just carrying, a, carrying around a backpack full of hats. Anyone does anything, you you deserve this. You one for you, one for you. The crowd was pretty hyped on it. I could see you yeah. doing that for sure. Heydays was no different. All I remember was him just whipping hats off the top. Yeah, I took too many hats. <laughs> Screaming at everybody. Yeah. No voice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's trouble. Jackson last year I lost my voice too. So <laughs> but that's exciting. It's cool to get uh it's crazy how many people you bump into on the hill. Um yeah. Just so casually. Well, the snowmobile industry is kind of small, really, when you think about oh, it. It really it's, is, it's too. It's small. Yeah. Too. That is a high concentration event, for sure. So, do you guys do anything outside of snowmobile parts? Oh, here we go. Um, yes. But is it powder coat? Oh, yeah. So, we do everything in-house, right? So, um, the only thing we don't do in-house is extrude the metals. So, yeah, powder coating is part of it. Um, there's another project that we're doing. It's a, it's a, it's a motorsports company, but it's, uh, it's not snowmobiling, 
but I don't want to cross the two yet. <laughs> so if one day uh, we'll announce it and people be like, oh, no shit, buddy. Um, but uh, yeah, we've got a couple. I mean, what we do, you know, apply it. You know, yep. it's something you're passionate about. It's something that we go to huge lengths, you know, to make sure that it's quality, um, customer support, I mean, everything. So it's kind of hard to, to not spread that throughout. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But right now, um, snowmobile stuff keeps us plenty busy. So, but uh, yeah, that's all we got for you today. Oh. Thanks for t- <laughs> use that thing. I don't know why I waited <laughs> until right now to do that. <laughs> <laughs> thank you all very much for tuning in and now a quick round of applause for matt <laughs> oh, okay yeah we're, we're done here shut it down keep it going you're gonna have to cut me off <laughs>